Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, I'm going to give you an introduction to key events in JavaScript. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So what we've discussed in the previous topic is event listeners. An event listener can be added to an HTML element. They will listen for specific events to create interactive web pages. We'll be discussing key down and key up. There is a third type of key event called key press. However, according to the official documentation, this event isn't compatible with all web browsers, so you should avoid using key press. A key down event occurs when you press down on a key. A key up event occurs when you release a key. By adding an event listener to the DOM document, we can detect when we press down or release a key. Here's how. We will access our DOM, then add an event listener. Add event listener. We have two arguments, the event type and a callback. When we press down on a key, let's do something. Doesn't matter what key it is, any key. For this next argument, I can either pass in a callback, an anonymous function, or an arrow function. I like arrow functions, so I'm going to use an arrow function. We're provided with an event parameter. When something happens within our web browser, an event object is created. We can access it. So I'm going to console.log this event object, and we'll see the details of it. Be sure to select your web browser. I'm going to press the Q key. Then let's go to inspect, console, and here's that event. The web browser provided us with a keyboard event. The key pressed was Q. There's a relevant key code of 81. And there's other properties too, like was the Alt key being held down at the time? It wasn't. Same thing with the Shift key. And the target, which is the body of our document. I'm going to output the key property of the event. We'll press a different key. I'm going to hold down the F key. I'm not releasing it, I'm holding it down. We're going to consistently fire key down events. I would like to detect when I release a key. I will use the key up event. So let's copy this, paste it. The event is going to be key up. I'll display something else. I'm going to use a template string. I will display key down equals, then I will display this event's key. Let's do this with key up too. I'll just copy this. Key up equals event.key. Let's go back to our console. I'm going to hold down the S key. Then when I release it, we'll have a key up event. Key up equals S. Oh, one more important thing, the arrow keys. We have arrow up, arrow down, arrow left, and arrow right. If you ever would like to make some sort of game, the arrow keys are also accessible. Now what we'll do on key down and key up is change an HTML element. So to make this simple, within our HTML document, I'm going to create a div element. This div element will have an ID of my box. I'll add some text, an emoji. All right, let's add a little bit of CSS. We will select my box. I will set the background color to be light blue. We haven't picked light blue yet. I will set a width of 200 pixels, a height of 200 pixels, a font size of 7.5 REM, I'll use Flexbox, Display Flex, Justify Content Center. Align Item Center. This part's important for the next exercise. We are going to set the position to relative for relative positioning. I'll set the body of my document to have no margin. Margin, zero. All right, we are ready. We are going to select the ID of my box. Const my box equals document dot get element by ID. The ID that I'm going to select is my box. When I press a key down, I'm going to change the text content of my box. My box dot text content equals I'll pick a different emoji. Let's do that one. 
and I'll change the CSS. My box dot style dot background color equals tomato or some other color of your choosing. So when I press down on any key, the HTML and CSS is going to change. I'm going to release that key, but we don't revert back to normal. Our HTML element stays that way. What we'll do is that when we release a key, we'll revert these changes by going back to the original. So let's take my box, change the text content to equal an emoji because I like emojis. We'll use the original one. Then I will set the background color to be light blue. Now, if I were to hold down a button, the HTML and CSS is going to change until I release that button, which I am about to now in three, two, one, go. I'm going to try and press the space bar as fast as I can. Seizure warning. Let's go. OK, it's about time we move on. What we're going to do now is using the arrow keys, move this element. We're going to create a const of move amount. When pressing an arrow key, how far do we want to move this element? Let's say 10 for 10 pixels. I will create a variable for x. Think of these as coordinates. I will set that to be 0. And y. y will also be 0. x for any horizontal movement. And y for any vertical movement. Document dot add event listener. When we have a key down event, I would like to do something. I'll write an arrow function. We're provided with an event. Do all this code. I only want to do something if a user uses an arrow key. So if I was to console.log my event, then access the key property. Let's go to inspect, console, select your document. I would like to do something only if the key pressed is arrow up, arrow down, arrow left, or arrow right. I don't want any of the other keys. I can write this if statement. If access our event, access its key, follow this with the starts with method. Does this key start with arrow? We'll only enter this if statement if the key of the event is arrow up, arrow down, arrow left, or arrow right. Then we'll write a switch. We haven't written any switches for a while. We will examine the key of our event. With switches, we examine a value against matching cases. If we have a case of arrow up, if the key of our event matches the case of arrow up, then do this. We'll take our y coordinate, subtract our movement amount, which is 10. y minus equals the movement amount. And then be sure to break to break out of the switch. Then we need a case for arrow down. Arrow down. Y plus equals our movement amount. Arrow left. Arrow left. X for the horizontal axis. Minus equals the movement amount. And then arrow right arrow right x plus equals the movement amount then outside of the switch but within our if statement we're going to access my box access the style access the top property set it equal to a template string we're going to take our variable of y for the y coordinate then add pixels take the top property of my box Set it equal to the y coordinate. We're going to copy this and do this with the left property. Set it equal to x in pixels. Be sure to select the body of your document. We can move right with the right arrow key. Down. Left. And up. Or diagonal if I hit two keys at once. The arrow keys have a default behavior to scroll. You can see that if we go down too far, we have a scroll bar on the right hand side. We can prevent the default behavior of a key. We just have to add this line of code. Take our event, then follow it with the prevent default method. 
so when my element scrolls off screen, it'll disappear. We're not going to scroll with it. To increase the distance in which this element moves, we can increase the move amount. Let's set it to be 100. Now we're moving a lot further with each key press. Hey, this is Bro from the Future. There's one more thing I would like to add to this project. When pressing down on a key, let's change the text content and the background color, much like what we did with the first exercise. Then when we release a key, we'll revert the HTML and the CSS back to normal. We're combining the first exercise and the second one. And this is the result. When I move the arrow keys, this guy is going to freak out until I let go. Pretty exciting. All right, everybody. So that is an introduction to key events in JavaScript. You're going to add an event listener to the document. When you select your document and press a key, when the key is pressed down, that will create a key down event. When you release a key, that creates a key up event. And well, everybody, that is an introduction to key events in JavaScript.